Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good day, saints, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Neliswa Shona Chigudu, and welcome to Devotion Time. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, thank you, dear Lord, for this wonderful, blessed time that you have blessed us with to come and share with each other your word. Lord, you said in your word, where two or three are gathered, you are also amongst them. I pray right now that you will be with us. Your Holy Spirit may settle within our hearts, anoint my tongue, that it may speak only that which comes from you and be with the viewers at home. May they hear that which you wish them to hear. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Our sharing for today, we will find under the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And the title for this devotion is, What is Stopping Your Faith? Okay, we shall read from Mark 5, from verses 25 up until verses 29, the King James Version. And it says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now here is a woman which had an, um, a uterine disorder where she was flowing blood for a period of 12 years. It says that it had been 12 years of trying literally everything. She had tried doctors, I would think even herbs, certain rituals probably, but all of that was in vain. And all it was doing for her, it was just depleting her resources as she was getting worse and worse. Now, Shem, what made things even worse for her was that this condition was rather a very unpleasant one and a very unfriendly one. As when we read in Leviticus 15, verses 19 and 25 to 33, they declare a person in her condition as having been ceremonially unclean. The laws were saying that even the bed that she slept on, even where the object that she slept, she sat on, would be defi defiled as unclean. So even the people which were around the hair, if they were to touch her bed or if they were to touch the object that she had sat on, they would be declared as unclean. Now, verse 19 even mentions that even during a normal period, a person who touched a ceremonially unclean uh, woman would be declared unclean until evening as well. So it was so sad, um, her situation, in that if that's the case, I can imagine it means relationships would be an issue for her. And if you know very well, God has created us to be, a rela to be relational beings. So when we do not have genuine relationships, when we do not have relationships in our lives, we certainly do feel that there is a lack in our lives. But I am imagining that because of her status, she probably was struggling even in that area. Life Application Bible even comments that Jewish men would carefully avoid touching, speaking to, or even looking at her. Imagine, if you are not even going to be looked at because of your condition that you don't even have power over. So she was basically an untouchable, an outcast. What a lonely and a miserable life that must be. Now, but I like her faith. I like when it says that 
when she heard about Jesus, she decided, she said within herself, that if I can but touch the helm of, her, of his garment, imagine she being the untouchable, she being um, the one who um, makes other people be declared unclean if they touch her. Now, was deciding she's going to touch the helm of Jesus' garment. What a manner of faith is that? She was deciding that she's going to do the very act that uh, was making the others unclean when they come into contact with her. That must have been such a kind of faith which is so strong, a daring faith, a daring faith which says, even though I know my obstacles, and I, they are factual. The fact is, I'm this person who people can't even come close to. But I'm going to go out there and go close, as close as touching um, another person in order for me to get healing. Because I have faith that even touching this person won't defile this person. Instead, it would heal me. It was a faith which was challenging her own obstacles. It was a faith which was not afraid to take risks because I can imagine if it was me, I would be scared and think, hey, what if I get and then as I'm still starting to touch him and the next thing he turns around and lashed me. But her faith dared even that risk because she was convinced. It was a faith which was like, which was unlike Thomas where she, um, where she did not wait to see a tangible evidence. You know, some of us, we walk around and we vow that we would never do certain things until we see a tangible evidence. But her faith was not like that. Her faith was good enough even um, to be convinced by hearing the stories of other people. It was an active faith which prays and pushes until something happens. Remember, she was 12 years with this condition. Now, I had heard and I had also read that a habit for it to be confirmed in someone's life, it takes only 21 days. So, even though this was not a habit for her, but to have people treating like this, for even a period of 21 days, I can imagine what it can do to you. But for her, she was receiving this kind of treatment, this kind of suffering for 12 years, a period way longer than 21 days. So I can imagine what, it, what, what, what type of um, identity um, it could have brought to her about herself. But her faith dead, even that identity that this condition had given her. And she refused to accept it as permanent in her life. How many of us miss out on opportunities because of a false identity that life has given us? Let's say, for instance, maybe you grew up being told you will never amount to anything. You grew up being told that you are such a failure. And then you believe that. And then you never want to even go out there and be daring and try things that the Lord has put in your heart. But this woman, in spite of the 12 years of an identity, which was um, uh, giving her an isolation from other people, she still did not allow that to block her way, to block her healing. How many of us are willing to dare fear of further pain in what um, we thought or we believed? Let's say you, 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 you want to try out something and, and, and you, you start um, being fearful. What if it does not go according to the way that I, I had planned? But this woman, she decided not to even let that thought cross her mind and stop her. She decided not to even let the what if 
What if this man turns around and rejects me? She decided to brave her fears as well. It was because of her daring act of faith that she was healed. In life, there are personal blessings which require a daring and an active faith. You see, for this woman, this was a personal blessing for her. Only her could act out of that kind of faith for her to receive the kind of healing that she needed. And yet in life, we miss out on our personal blessings because when God puts a word in his heart and he says, my child, I want you to go out and do this. I want you to do this, wanting to bless us. Because of the fears that we have in our hearts, because of the lack of faith, we cocoon ourselves and decide, no, I'd rather protect myself. What if it doesn't go according to what I, 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 I had uh, thought it would? What if this happened? What if this happened? And then end up losing out on the blessings which were meant only for us. The woman had depleted all her resources trying to restore herself. But it says only when she met Jesus, immediately her plague was gone. So many times we try and we do, uh, we try to solve our problems by ourselves. We've tried so many things. We have this hollow in our spirit that we feel um, it needs to be filled up. But even filling it up with materialism, filling it up with relationships which are empty, we end up not even getting the healing. Instead, they're depleting our resources. But when we go to Jesus, only Jesus can heal us of all the plagues that life has thrown at us. When we go to Jesus in that type of daring faith, only Jesus can help us to overcome those burdens, those obstacles that were hindering us from receiving that which God had personally put aside for us. Jesus is saying to um, us today, I am here. You don't have to look for external fixes anymore. I am here. I need you to go against yourself. I need you to take that daring act against the very same thing that is stopping your faith. I need you to come to me and trust that I can heal you and trust that I can do anything that I say I can do. How about joining me in surrendering those um, obstacles that we know about in, um, in our lives to God and step out there by faith? It is my prayer that we can go out there and claim our personal blessings by acting up our faith. Not have a dead faith of just sitting and doing nothing, but have faith that God will do what he said he will do. That God is Jehovah Raphael who can heal us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, dear Lord, that today you are reminding us once again that when we come unto you by faith, when you are faithful to do that which you have promised to do, you are faithful to do exceedingly, abundantly more than we can ever imagine. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit can qu quench all those fears in our hearts that are disabling us to go out there by faith. Lord, I pray for thy convicting spirit to settle within our hearts and give us no rest, dear Lord, until we do that which you call us to do so that we may receive our blessings, we may receive our healing and walk and work for you as well. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. <music> 